Hey guys, this is Nick with Phone Arena reporting for you from MWC 2014. And right here I have the Samsung Galaxy S5 next to LG's flagship, the LG G2. What, I, what I'm about to do is to give a quick comparison between these two high-end devices. Let's start with the Samsung Galaxy S5. So overall the phone is of standard size for a 2014 flagship, but it's still a bit larger than the LG G2. The phone is slightly taller and slightly more wide, but as a whole, the difference between the two is negligible. One peculiar thing about the LG G2 is that its power and volume keys are on the back side of the device, which is a solution that might not suit everyone's needs and preferences. While the Samsung Galaxy S5 sticks to the button, to having the buttons on the side. Here on the left side we have its volume key and the power key is on the right side of the device. Let's move on and talk about the displays on these two phones. The Samsung Galaxy S5 here comes with a 5.1 inch 1080p Super AMOLED display while the LG G2 relies on a 5.2 inch 1080p display made using IPS LCD technology. Overall both screens are excellent, they provide great color presentation, excellent level of details. What's really amazing about the LG G2, however, is that it manages to put a slightly larger screen in a body that's slightly smaller than that of the Samsung Galaxy S5. Alright, now a few words about the software of these two devices. The Samsung Galaxy S5 here comes with Android 4.4 KitKat and as you see on top of it we have Samsung's custom interface, the latest version of TouchWiz which comes with a number of extra features. The LG G2 is not running on Android 4.4 yet, but it's supposed to be updated in the near future. And of course, its user interface is still back with a ton of goodies, lots of extra features that you get out of the box. Let's flip these two phones around and take a look at their cameras now. On the back of the Samsung Galaxy S5 we find a 16 megapixel camera with autofocus, LED flashes here at the bottom, while the LG G2 relies on a 13 megapixel camera with autofocus, single LED flash and optical image stabilization. Both phones should be able to produce excellent and very detailed photos in broad daylight and even at night. Here we are at the camera apps of these two devices. Now we already know that the LG G2 has a very capable camera however we have a feeling that the Samsung Galaxy S5 might outpace it that's because its 16 megapixel camera comes with a number of extras one of them is its ultra fast out of focus in fact Samsung claims that its camera should be able to focus onto an object for a time of up to 0.3 seconds which is quite impressive for a smartphone camera another cool trick that the galaxy s5 camera can do is called selective autofocus basically the camera can blur the background of an image while keeping the object that you're shooting in focus and that's really neat that's not something that all phones can do the hdr mode that comes with the samsung galaxy s5 has also been improved and it should provide you with better results when lighting conditions are a bit more tricky than they usually are. As far as processing power is concerned, the Samsung Galaxy S5 relies on a quad-core Snapdragon processor, we're assuming it's a Snapdragon 800, but it's running at 2.5 GHz, which is slightly higher than the usual 2.3 that we see it in other devices. The phone also has 2 GB of RAM, which is a bit strange. You know, in 2014 we're going to see more and more high-end smartphones come with 3 GB of RAM, but Samsung has decided to stick with 2 GB of RAM for it's uh, for the multitasking ability of its Samsung Galaxy S5. The LG G2 here is also pretty fast. It relies on a Snapdragon 800 chip running at 2.26 GHz. It's more or less, it should be more or less as capable as the Samsung Galaxy S5. But you know, because of the higher clock speed, the Samsung Galaxy S5 might be able to score higher on benchmarks and overall you should be able to get higher frame rates when playing games and overall the phone should be a little bit more responsive. One thing that the Samsung Galaxy S5 has is a fingerprint scanner embedded in its home key. It serves as an extra security feature used to unlock the phone as well as to lock particular functions within the phone. For example, you can lock particular images from your image gallery so that nobody else but you can see them. The LG G2 doesn't have a fingerprint scanner 
but however it is expected to get some uh, LG's knock code feature which basically will allow you to create your own unlock pattern for the lock screen of the device and with up to 86,000 combinations that should prove as a decent security feature for your LG G2. As far as build quality and materials are concerned, Samsung has chosen to stick with plastic for the construction of the Galaxy S5. However, the phone does look and feel quite premium to the touch. It, it employs this dotted pattern on the back. It has a soft touch finish, but it looks and feels quite nice. It actually reminds us of the finish of the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, but it's different in its own way. And while we're at it, we have to mention that the Samsung Galaxy S5 will come in a variety of vibrant colors. The LG G2 here definitely doesn't look as premium. It is built of glossy plastic. It has a really fine pattern here, but as a whole, the phone is made of a glossy plastic and definitely doesn't, doesn't feel quite as premium as the Samsung Galaxy S5. And yet another key feature, key standout feature for the Samsung Galaxy S5 is that it is a water resistant device. The port on the bottom is protected by a flap and as a whole, water will have a really hard time getting underneath its surface. So you can actually take a shower with this phone and it should be all right. The LG G2 in comparison doesn't have any water resistant properties, so you better keep it away from water. One more thing before we go, as we already know, the LG G2 has a really, really big battery inside it. It has a capacity of 3000 milliamp hours, and thanks to the interface and hardware optimization that LG has implemented, the LG G2 can actually last quite a long time on a single charge. The Samsung Galaxy S5 comes with a slightly smaller 2800 milliamp hour battery, however, it should last at least as long as the LG G2, judging by what we heard about it. And one extra key feature that you might want to enable when your battery is really low is the ultra power saving mode. Basically, when it is enabled, it will turn your screen to black and white, which is expected to prolong significantly the longevity of your Samsung Galaxy S5. So there you have it, guys. This was our quick comparison between the Samsung Galaxy Galaxy S5 and the LG G2. For more details, check out our website phoneArena.com.